Hello everyone and welcome to another computer history video series from ASA Digitalog collection. I want to go a little bit more back in time uh, for this for today's presentation, specifically to 1972 when the first home game console uh, was released to public, and that was the uh, Magnavox Odyssey, which I have uh, right here. Uh, the creator of Manabox Odyssey was an engineer called Ralph Baer. Um, he worked uh, on the idea of creating an interactive control that you could connect to your TV, uh, uh, like in the late 60s, while, while he was working for a company called Sanders Associates. Back in the day, in those days, Sanders Associates were actually, was actually an independent company, um, doing a lot of defense contractor work, um, such as uh, electronic defense systems and so on. And uh, he and, and uh, some of his associates created these um, controllers that you could connect to the TV and then they went around to different companies um, to see which of them would be willing to uh, produce it and sell it uh, on the market. Uh, Magnavox uh, was one such company. Magnavox back then was a producer of um, electronic things like uh, TVs and they, they, um, it, was in, it was in their interest to produce something um, that will connect, uh, make their TVs more interesting. Uh, Magnavox agreed to make the console uh, around late of 1971. Uh, the first uh, Magnavox Odyssey produced and um, released to the public was in 1972. Um, for the time, actually, that sold a lot of uh, copies. Over the lifetime of Magnavox uh, original Odyssey, they sold around 350,000. Um, considering this is, you know, a long time ago, <clears throat> um, and those those tend to be fairly rare. Um, it's not easy to find one on eBay nowadays if you don't already have one, um, and the prices can go even up to five hundred dollars um, for a good quality one. But anyway, back to uh, Magnavox. After they they made the um, the Odyssey, um, the production ran for about four years or so. Um, they kept improving on it, um, uh, just make it better and better, and um, they had the Magnavox Odyssey 300, uh, which was later followed by the uh, uh, improved 3000, there were other versions in the middle as well, and it culminated in 1978, when Magnavox released their last, what was to be their last console in the series, and that is the... Magnavox Odyssey 2. Um, there is a big difference in technology between anything past the original console and, and those ones. Uh, but today we'll focus on, like I said, on the 31st home video console, the Magnavox Odyssey. So, what is that you want to get in the box? First of all, the box is huge. Um, nowadays, consoles come in much, much smaller boxes. But uh, let's see what's inside. Um, we'll look at those in a second, I'll explain what they are. Uh, there's the overlays, uh, manuals, uh, different game stuff. Those are, um, actually, let's look at this for a second for a side. Let's look at the actual console. Uh, unfortunately, mine uh, came damaged, so one of the controllers uh, is missing the parts on the inside, but it has a functional controller on the console itself. There's a TV adapter. So the way this works is that you have uh, the two movable rotatable pads on each side and a game reset on top. Uh, the console, like most early um, uh, Magnavox Odyssey ones, uh, it's really um, battery operated. There's a battery compartment on the back, uh, they believe also that, um, uh, these. Um, uh, the carriage slot right here uh, just connects to the TV, and those are the uh, controllers. Uh, connect. I'll, I'll, we'll actually open it this, uh, later in the video to see what's inside. So, beside the the the, uh, the console, all that the console does really is um, it is, displays three dots on the screen on a vertical uh, line. Uh, two of the dots are controllable by each of the um, controls, so one each player controls a, a square. Uh, the dot is basically a square, and then the middle one, um, the, the third dot is controlled by the logic in the console and the game. The game come come on those 
uh, what looks like cartridges. They're not really cartridges how we uh, how we think of them nowadays. Basically, they are a bunch of um, <coughs> uh, deep switches, effectively, uh, that change the behavior of the logic circuits inside the console itself. Um, I believe I have uh, six here, but they were uh, late uh, during the lifetime of the console. More games were released. Uh, they even had a, um, a shotgun-like uh, attachment. You could play different games, uh, like hunting game with that. Uh, but the, originally this came with, with six, uh, what they call cartridges, or six games. Now, the way the games differentiate themselves uh, on the screen is, uh, well, the rules are, are, are slightly different, of course, uh, but you have those uh, overlays. And the game comes with two different uh, sizes for overlays, depending on, on what um, TV size you have, and those just attach uh, to your uh, basically ele electro circuit your TV screen, and then uh, it illuminated from it's, it is illuminated from the back by the game, and then of course each game would have its own rules, um, and most of the, there's no score keeping for example in the console itself. The score is kept by you with with with, with a pen and paper. This is for example the um, the Alpine uh, skiing uh, skiing game. Uh, where it's transparent along the skiing route. Then it comes in two versions, small uh, and, and, and big. I'll show that later. Uh, and a, a lot of the game action not necessarily happened only on the screen, but happened off screen as well. Um, so for things like that, you had, for example, um, in here, uh, you had those um, uh, you know, slots, uh, so lot of slots you can do. You can play, you have those uh, cards for the haunted house. Um, there are, there's actually money here um, for a casino type game. Uh, they look very much like uh, Monopoly money. Uh, there's a trivia game, um, different states you can play. So you, you do an action on the screen and then the rules say, now you have to go you know, off screen with your friends and um, play. There is, there is a football game actually as well, as you can see. Uh, it's a football game, and it was, those are cards that uh, can be played uh, with the game. So, you know, half or sometimes even more than half of the game action would happen off screen with using pen and paper and different um, helping materials that, that, that this comes with, even comes with, with dice, for example. Um, uh, but still, that was, was fairly unique and, 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 and a lot of fun for the time. This, this is, for example, how you would uh, keep the score uh, as a scoreboard. Um, you just you would just rotate. I believe it stays. You have to bend it, and then it stays on its own, and then you can keep the score. So the reason it's so big is because well, half of it is the console, and the other half is everything else you need uh, to be able to uh, play the actual games. So let's see what is inside the original Magnavox Odyssey. You know, in case you are uh, wondering where the name uh, Digilog uh, Collection comes from, which is the name of my channel, uh, my computer collection, uh, it really is from Magnavox Odyssey because it, it is not, it, it is mostly a uh, digi digital uh, device, but it has anal analog parts. It's, it's not, a, it's, it is not an entire, entirely digital um, computer. It, uh, inside, it is built with transistor and diodes, and it does not use any um, um, any um, integrated circuits. It's all done um, with with discrete uh, components, which which makes it actually. Um, Fairly interesting and, and unique for the time. It was also uh, fairly cheaper to manufacture uh, like that, uh, which is one of the reasons uh, Ralph Baer uh, designed it the way he did. Cheap and simple. So the way the console works, you have this big, uh, you can't even call it motherboard, but it's just a big circuit board. And inside it, you have uh, those little little boards 
and they all connect in, in this kind of similar slots. Um, each of them controls some kind of um, part of the logic. Some of them are related to the uh, video output. Some of them are related to vertical, uh, vertical horizontal synchronization for the few dots, uh, the three dots that the console displays. Uh, the design is actually fairly, you know, I wouldn't call it clean, um, and it's not beautiful either, but, but it works and it's, it's very, very simple. So, you know, nowadays um, you could easily put something like this together. Uh, I believe in here is the video encoder. The two uh, uh, controllers come here and the video output is uh, right, right here. Uh, the antenna uh, that you connect the TV. So yeah, here you go. All right, so I wanted to end this um, video with answering two questions. One, um, if you want to get one, you know, how, what, what, how can you do that and how much should you expect to pay for one? So if you go on the eBay, um, they tend to be slightly more expensive and you cannot really get cheaper than about $150, $160 and I've seen them at the high end go up as high as $500, especially uh, the ones that have um, a lower serial number, so such that uh, the first production around in 1972, uh, those tend to be um, a lot more expensive, about $300 to $400, and the serial number is here on the back. Um, it's actually encoded, it's, it's not, it, the, the numbers are not, um, you know, serial, um, but there are websites out there which decode this and can tell exactly um, when, when was yours manufactured depending on serial number, so at least on mine it says RAM 2. So that's the price. And the second question I want to answer is, can you emulate it? And um, it turns out, yes, you can. There is there are a few emulators there. One of the the first one created and one of the best ones is um, ODEMU, ODI EMU. You can just Google for that, um, and that can emulate all the games, all the twelve cartridges, um, as well as the uh, the gun, uh, the shotgun attachment, and it can play the games with and, and without the uh, overlays that the console came with. So it gives you a pretty good. Um, 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 emulation environment. The problem that is that it runs in DOS, so you'll have to have um, a DOS emulator, such as like like DOSBox, for example, uh, to run that one. But uh, it's good. Uh, okay. Well, um, that being said, thank you very much for uh, watching another computer history uh, video from us at Digilog Collection. Um, don't forget to subscribe and see you next time.